<clears throat> okay, picking back up in the book, God did tell you to me. Part two. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the last paragraph. Be mindful of the teaching of my servant Moses. Be mindful whom I charged at Horeb with laws and rules for all Israel. Lo, I will send the prophet Elijah, that would be me, to you before the coming of the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. Well, he's been here 16 years, getting me ready. The time to come is the day of the Lord. I will put their teaching in their innermost being and inscribe it upon the hearts of the new covenant is a way of saying the purpose of Elijah to bring the families of the Jewish people, fathers to the sons, sons to the fathers, what it says, back to practicing Judaism and righteousness which will prosper. That's also the man of Isaiah 53. Make the many righteous. The first six verses, in quotes, and remove their guilt. I offer them myself for guilt, to remove guilt, and agree to go to the fire of refinement. Those that heed and fear God will return to synagogue, learning and practicing the teachers of God, to stay in right standing with him, Effectively putting God's teaching into their innermost being and describing upon their hearts. Let's see how Tobia Singer, Michael Skoback, Kravitz, the Jews for Judaism, let's see how they handled this. They've been given a free reign, so to speak, to become the tip of the top, to become arrogant and pompous. And their ignorance shows through. But even ignorant people can be pompous and uh, self-righteous. Let's see them do it. Let's see them recognize when Moshiach and God comes. They do pray for it, do they not? Do they think it's going to happen? They don't act like it. No, they hear about me and they stick their head in the sand and say, I've got 66,000 followers. He can't hurt me or my book. Right, Tobia? Jews for Judaism? How many followers do you have with your false teaching? It's going to come back to you. I don't care how much you pray. God could care less. You do him, you do me wrong. <laughs> I just say, huh, you got things up against you you never discovered. You're not going into the scroll of remembrance. You will not see the Jewish heaven, any of you, period, till you come correct. This is what you pray for. Come, Moshe, come. Come, Moshe, come. Why? When he comes, he's going to have a reckoning with you and dismiss you. Why do you pray that? Are y'all just ignorant? Uh, this is a defense. To libel and slander, by the way. Pompous, arrogant, ignorant. And I can back it up. Oh, yes, I can. I have a little help. God kind of takes over. God could see Greece and Rome and their mythology of gods and men who are gods. That would be Jesus and knew they were coming one day. And when they found the people of the book, 
of one God, that destruction of the second temple and expulsion, dispersal, exile, from the land was coming with them, and that the land would be desolate for ages. God's prophecy, prophecy is based on absolute knowledge of humanity from beginning to end. In the days of Jeremiah, it was time to look forward to the days of the third temple in Jeremiah. And God had Jeremiah write his words accordingly. See a time is coming. In his day, Jeremiah, the Jewish people, became the Assyrian Babylon exiles by the defeat and deportation of Judah to Babylon that had been Assyria when the other tribes were previously defeated and deportation from the northern kingdoms and lands east of the River Jordan. Sin forgiveness is in the book of Isaiah for the Assyrian Babylon exiles and the second temple. They became, a, for whatever reason, God wants the Holy Seed to build it. He's got whatever he wants you give him. Yeah. Okay. That's what you say. Okay. We'll build it. That's what you say, Jewish people. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it on Mount Zion. Okay. You want the specifications on that? You want to know what it looks like? Yeah, they do. God says you do. He'll give it to me when he's ready. Welcome to my nightmare. Sin forgiveness in the book of Isaiah for the Assyrian Babylon exiles in the second temple and sin forgiveness to the Roman dispersal and the third temple is in the book of Jeremiah for a time to come. The time when Israel returns to the land of desolation and makes it bloom again, and it has, and renews the old cities and Jerusalem Jerusalem, and that is today. Isaiah 61 5. Strangers shall stand in posture, pasture your flocks. Aliens shall be your plowmen and vile vine tremors. Do we really want to read this? In the return, I guess we do. In the return of the Assyrian Babylon exiles, the northern kingdom was inhabited by Gentiles imported by the Assyrians. Today, the stranger among the Jewish people are the Israeli Arabs and the Israeli Christians. The aliens are the trespassers, Palestinians, and Arabs who are not Israeli. Isaiah 61, while you shall be called priests of the Lord and term seven servants of our Lord, servants, not righteous servants. This is after Isaiah 53. Can you Jewish people not get it? Toby still thinks he's a righteous servant. Skobak thinks he's a righteous servant. Kravitz thinks he's a righteous servant. And yet none of them can give you any commentary that backs that belief. Liars. Liars. Why? Why not Moshiach to come? Why they have to put themselves in it? Is it selfishness? Is it ego? Is it to fight the missionaries? Yeah, but all you did was make God mad. And that makes me mad because I've lived with God for 16 years. That's not necessarily a pleasant thing to go through. And I did it for you, you Jewish people. No, actually, I had, you know what? That's not true. I did it because I had to. 
You don't say no to God. But that is what I feel. I know if they have other destruction come to them, I'm going to feel very bad if he lets me. He doesn't have to let me feel bad. That's what I've learned in this Father Common. I mean, he just doesn't need anything he wants. It's not easy, people. It's not easy what I'm going through to be this man. While you shall be called priest of the Lord and term servants of our God, you shall enjoy the wealth of nations and revel in their riches. Riches. Yeah, not going to happen, dudes. It's just poetry. Just a good story. The Assyrian Babylon exiles were forgiven of all sins, became a holy seed of God, and they rebuilt the second temple. They are referred to as servants of God in their sinless state, and not God's righteous servant. Elijah comes and delivers the new covenant with sin forgiveness, for the Roman dispersal to be a holy seed, and they will rebuild the third temple for God to return suddenly with the assistance of God's righteous servant as David. Elijah, prophet like Moses, the man described in 53, Moshe. Israel is one of the greatest countries on earth. There ain't any question about that. They have wealth and riches equal to any nation for its size and more than most. The nations are not going to give Israel their wealth and riches. That's just poetry up there. It's just, this is what we'd like to hear. As many believe will happen in the redemption era. They have the same wealth and riches. Nobody's going to give you your stuff. People just don't do that. What do you think? The Arab Emirates are going to say, uh, we're going to give you all of our billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars because you're Jews. Really? Well, that's what Kravitz and Skobak and Toby are think. They believe that. Now that's spooky. Not the word I would have used. Because your shame was double, men cry, disgrace is their portion. Assuredly, they shall have a double share in their land. Joy shall be theirs for all time. This is Isaiah 61. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery without a burnt offering. I will pay them their wages faithfully and make a covenant with them for all time. Be mindful. Build my temple. Their offspring shall be known among the nations. Their descendants in the midst of the people. Jesus spread out over the world. All who see them shall recognize that they are a stock. The Lord has breast. No more taunts of the nations. Now, if your rabbis would do their job. Verse 8. References the covenant made with Moses and the Israelites, which is eternal, but never complete until the vindication, not restoration and peace on earth, the vindication of the Lord in the awesome, fearful day of the Lord. What sounds peaceful about that? You rabbis. I mean, I'm a prophet of God, okay? I understand you rabbi way down here, and they mean nothing to me. I was taught by God who wrote the book. And you got these men teaching men, uh, there was ten lost tribes. Uh, the world's going to love us. Uh, here's the bucket, give me donations. That's what I think of your rabbi.
Nah, I ain't mad. I'm not close to none. Now, this is not the man you would have met 16 years ago. Now, this is the man God has had me become. Uh, a better representation of him. If you think I'm tough, if you think I get on these people, like you're very surprised, because why? Because why? Because you thought based on their teachings and exaltation of the world that come oh she had come was going to be like Jesus. Yes, you did. Oh, yes, you have, and yes, they do. Well, this entity called God got nothing to do with that. He would never be a man. He would never become a man. He would never commit a, a sacrifice. And he would never be a sacrifice. Not this, not the man I, uh, the, the person that I know. He is a person. But you can't equate him to a human being in any context. Not on forgiveness. You know, Jew for Judaism, Alre Judaism, Tobia. Kravitz, Scobay, they think in themselves, well, I do so much, it'll be all right. Well, you don't have one clue of who God is. And no, it's not all right. Not all right at all. You have hurt God. And I'll tell you something, if I could hurt him, I would because he's put me through so much pain, I'd fight him if he was a man. But of course he's not, and I can't fight him. I just got to go through it, and I have changed. I'm ready to do this task. But now I got to deal with people like Singer, Scoback, and Kravitz. And none of them will ever see the Jewish heaven. None of them. We'll go into the scroll. You may as well think of me as the man who holds the scroll. Because God's in me. He's the one that holds it. And the angel of his presence, the man of divine beings. Well, you better respect that. All of your people, everything you teach and think about comes from the Hebrew Bible. 20 plus prophets of God. Speak his words, men and divine beings, and you don't even understand that. You're so lovely to me. What did we say, kindergarten? You may be as well teaching the Hebrew Bible in kindergarten. Oh, God's coming at you, and what you don't understand is I got 150,000 views, and none of the views come hot and heavier than Toby is saying. I got three of them. What was that? What, 173 the other day? Yeah, it doesn't sound like much, but I've been doing it for two years. You're well over three, four thousand viewers hearing me telling you for what you are a fraud, a charlatan. Don't tell me you just didn't make that up. Don't tell me. You want me to say the big word? An absolute liar. You can't possibly know that 53 describes the righteous servant of God. Unless you say it's Hitler. You say, well, God had me read the Hebrew, the English, and made me think it could be, you know, Leviticus, guilt offering. Really? Well, when does the compensation God <laughs> serious mean anything? And a 20% markup to the rabbi. Yeah, you didn't mention that, did you? See, I see all kinds of lies in everything you're saying. So does God. That's why it's being said. He speaks to me. Go ahead and keep it on it. We're going to dig you down until you are nothing. We're going to take that 66000 from you. Oh, there may be half of it for stupid Christians, but we'll see. And, oh, I get my moment. 
And Keith says, you can't beat him. I mean, you're, you're losing right now. It's not going to end. They take a long time. Me and the Spirit call him Pokey. He's so slow. He says, I'm very thorough. So, The recognition among the nations that the Jewish people are a stock, the Lord is blessed, requires that the third temple be built. I graciously rejoice in the Lord, Isaiah 61. My whole being exults in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of triumph. None of this happened in the days of Jesus. Grant me in a role of victory, like the bridegroom adorned with a turban like a bride be decked with her finery. For as the earth brings forth the growth and the garden makes the seed shoot up, so the Lord will make victory, not peace, and renown shoot up in the presence of the nations. Uh, he didn't pick an exactly peaceful person, see? You understand? Was Moses a peaceful man? No. He killed a man the first time we see him in anger. Ezekiel tells us, I went in the fury and bitterness of my spirit. And he's a priestly man. In the hand of God. That's who he looks for. Or to take on the rebellious breed. Victory and renown for the Assyrian Babylon exile was the building of the second temple. That's in verse 13, by the way, Michael, go back. If you think that means exaltation of the world, you do point it out in your verse by verse, I base 63. And you go on with the most ridiculous and absurd narrative. Next to Toby the singer. Yeah, you are number two. That I've ever seen. Victory and renown for the Roman dispersal will be in the building of the third and final temple. God calls his eternal temple. Of God, despite the attempts of the nations, that would be the northern kingdom or Gentiles weren't important to stop them. And they shall never be uprooted and overthrown again. That's it. Now we go to chapter 32, the new heaven. I should have... Thirty, it was real short. And then 31, part two, and 32... 31.1 and 2.